Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, not just to the radiologists, uh, I got a few messages from last week's uh, video uh, from orthopedic surgeons and um, sports medicine physicians who also look at these videos. So, hello to everybody. All right, let's get on with it. Today's video is looking at uh, rotator cuff tendinosis. So, we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at the normal appearance of the rotator cuff tendon. We're going to look at a thing called frame, which is an irregularity of the tendon. And the third thing I look at is what tendinosis looks like. So here's the video. So the normal signal within a rotator cuff tendon is black on PD or PD fat sat or T2. And the orange arrow here is pointing to that low signal seen within the rotator cuff tendon here. The other important thing about a normal tendon is to look at this interface. So if you look at the edge of the bursal surface fibers, they're nice and sharp. Okay, there's no real definition, there's no irregularity, and that becomes important when we talk about fraying of the uh, tendon. We can get artifactual increase in signal. So this is magic angle. So we can see this is a PD fat set and there is increased signal present within the tendon. So how do you know if this is magic angle or not? First, it occurs only on PD sequences. So if you're running a T2 weighted sequence or if you've got T1, you won't see this as magic angle. Um, secondly, it's the location of it. So magic angle occurs here where that supraspinatus tendon starts to curve down. So this is a, a very typical appearance for magic angle. You shouldn't uh, expect to see magic angle down here or up here because the angle is not right. So localized increased signal in this position, in this location, uh, suggests that it's magic angle. Okay, so now let's look at fraying. So fraying is not a tear, so you don't go and repair fraying. You have to think of fraying more like an abrasion. So you've fallen over and you've scratched the skin and it's not a complete cut, it's just an irregularity of the skin surface. So similarly, fraying is the same thing. So let's look at the normal interface of the rotator cuff tendon. So you see a nice sharp line here. And as you keep coming more laterally, what happens to that line? It becomes irregular and ill-defined. And this is the typical appearance of fraying. Fraying occurs on the bursal surface, not on the articular surface and you get an irregularity, ill definition of the bursal surface fibers, but this is not a tear. What about tendinosis? So we said that a normal rotator cuff tendon is black. In tendinosis, that signal increases. So this becomes intermediate signal. We have a PD sequence here, and this is a T2 weighted sequence. So, and if it was a PD fat side, we'd expect a similar signal as well. So what we have here is an intermediate signal. It's not a fluid signal like the bursal fluid here, but an intermediate signal. We also have some ill definition of the tendon, and it also looks a little bit expanded. So the three things we're looking for with tendinosis are increased signal, but it's an intermediate signal, not fluid signal. You have ill definition of the tendon fibers, and you also can get enlargement of the tendon. Okay, so we've covered three things in this video. We've looked at the normal appearance of a rotator cuff tendon, the appearance of fraying and why it's not a tear, and the three things to look for in tendinosis.